Welcome to chapter 4, Human Development. So when we hear the words human development, we mean enlarging people's freedoms and opportunities and simultaneously improving their well-being. It is all about the real freedom where ordinary people can decide who to be, what to do and how to live their life. So in this chapter, we are going to learn the concept of human development with respect to nations and communities. Because these two words, nations and communities, is all about human, and human development has a big correlation. So the first topic is growth and development. We know the meaning of both the words, and the common link between both of them is that they are changes over a period of time. What I mean by that is, to grow or develop anything from a present state to something else, it is called as change, right? If things don't change, there will be no growth and development. But now I'll point out the difference between growth and development. We can quantify growth, meaning we can measure the growth in terms of numbers or values. For example, if a population grows, we can count them. If someone's height increases, we can count. Now while we can quantify growth, I want you to understand growth can be both positive as well as negative. The numbers or values can increase or decrease. Or in other words, we can say that the change may be either positive change or a negative change. On the other hand, development is always positive. In order to develop anything, you will always have to add. There is no reduction or subtraction. It's always addition. Hence, we can say that development occurs when positive growth takes place. I'll give you an example. Suppose your learning of any subject has improved or there is a growth in your understanding of a particular subject. While there is a growth, meaning your learning curve is going up. But you will have to accept that this growth is accompanied by development, which means it's because of your development in the way you are learning, could be because of online videos, extra materials, mock tests, whatever. Because of this development in your learning method, your understanding of the subject has gone up. So I hope you have gained some fresh perspective about the words growth and development and also where to use them. Now there is something that you need to understand. For a long time, a country's level of development was measured only in terms of its economic growth. That simply meant that bigger the economy of the country, the more developed it was considered. Even though this growth did not really mean much change in the lives of most people. It's like how our politicians say, look, our GDP is high and growing, our nation is doing good, we are a growing economy in the world, and all of those high five words. But in reality, the unemployment rate is high, poor educational standards, poor infrastructure, there's a huge difference in balance of payment, meaning differences in imports and export bills, then there's a large budget deficit, meaning the expenditure of the government is higher than its revenue, price rise, inefficient agriculture, gender inequality, and many more. So the whole point is that the quality of life people enjoy in a country, the opportunities they have and freedom they enjoy are important aspects of development. It is not just the GDP that matters. So this idea of human development were clearly spelled out for the first time in the late 1980s and 1990s by two South Asian economists, Mahbub ul Haq and Amartya Sen. Though Dr. Mahbub ul Haq was the one who introduced the concept of human development. He said, people are central to all development under this concept. The basic goal of development is to create conditions where people can live meaningful lives. This means that people must be healthy, be able to develop their talents, gain knowledge, participate in society and be free to achieve their goals and have a decent life. If we have to summarize everything in three words, that will be access to resources, Health and education are the key areas in human development and I'll tell you why. Very often people do not have the capability and freedom to make even basic choices. Because of lack of knowledge, social discrimination, inefficiency of institutions and many other reasons. And further, many people are denied of leading a healthy life, being able to get educated or to have the means to live a decent life. If you notice, it's a vicious cycle and we need to break this cycle. And the best approach is to work on the areas of health, education and access to resources which will enlarge their choices and if they have more choices that will improve their life. And a very good friend of mine once said to me, your choices define you. And it is very much true but those basic elements like health, education and resources have to be there for any society 
by default. It is only then I as an individual can make something out of it. If it is too philosophical, let me give you an example. An uneducated child cannot make the choice to be whatever he or she wants to become because their choice are limited by the lack of education. Similarly, poor people cannot choose to take medical treatment for disease because they cannot afford it or they don't have any idea about it, where to go, what to do. So in this case, both money as a resource and knowledge are limited. I hope you are understanding this chapter so far. Now we are going to read about the four pillars of human development. Actually there are six but in this chapter we will just read about four. And these pillars are equity, sustainability, productivity and empowerment. And the other two are cooperation and security. The first one is equity. It means equal access to opportunities to everyone irrespective of their gender, race, income and caste. For example, there are two groups and if we were to observe which group had most of the school dropouts and suppose group A has the most, this will then lead to finding out the reason for such a behavior. Like in India, a large number of people belonging to socially and economically backward groups drop out of school. This shows how the choices of these groups get limited by not having access to knowledge. So knowledge here is not equally available to certain sections of the society when compared to the better sections of the society and it has its own long set of consequences. The second pillar is sustainability. The meaning of sustainability is continuity. So if you want a continuous human development then each generation must have the same opportunities. Many times the word sustainability is used with regards to nature and environment how we need to preserve our natural resources for our future generations. But let us understand an example of sustainability with regards to human development. In many parts of India, community does not stress the importance of sending its girl children to school. As a result, many opportunities will be lost for these women when they grow up. Due to that, many things will affect that are connected to their lives. Their children, family, household culture, behavior, so many things can be affected. This is what is the meaning of every generation must ensure the availability of choices and opportunities to its future generations. And the third pillar is productivity. Productivity means the amount of work put in by a labor or a human. In previous videos, we have read how people are the real wealth of nations. So that means improving their lives, their health, increasing their knowledge will lead to better work efficiency. More and better work will increase nation's economy. I hope you are getting the point. And the last pillar of human development is empowerment. It means the power to make choices. And always remember, power comes from increasing freedom and capability. In a society, the only way to empower people is by good governance, that is, the government working for and with the people by making public policies that eases the life of the people. So these were the four pillars of human development and these are essential for its measurement. Now we are going to read about how to calculate the human development. What are the approaches? To find a solution to any problem, we must look at the problems first. There are many ways of looking at the problem of human development. Some of the important approaches are A. The income approach B. The welfare approach C. Basic needs approach and D. Capabilities approach So this table over here shows the various approaches to human development. Let me quickly touch upon each one of them. First one is income approach. This idea says that people's income level reflects their level of freedom. Simply put, if you have more money, you do more things. So higher the level of income, the higher is the level of human development. So the economist felt, let's use this approach to measure human development. The second one is welfare approach. This idea says, if the government spends more on the people, then people will like it. They will benefit more. But in this approach, we see people as a receivers and not a giver. This way government will have to spend a lot. The third one is basic needs approach. This idea says forget about human choices. We will just focus on the basic needs and they are health, education, food, water supply, sanitation and housing. Because ultimately people for most of their life are busy dealing with these basic needs. So it's better we focus on these needs and nothing else. And the last one is capability approach. 
This approach is associated with Professor Amartya Sen, building human capabilities in the areas of health, education and access to resources is the key to increasing human development. So this goes back to what we read few minutes back, where we summarized everything in three words. We will now read about measuring human development. It is a bit of an economic topic, so let's get ready to understand what an economist do and how do they allocate resources. So there is something called the Human Development Index HDI, that ranks the countries based on their performance in the key areas of health, education and access to resources. So remember these key areas. These rankings are based on a score between 0 to 1 that a country earns from its record in the key areas of human development. Therefore, a score of 0 0.983 would be considered very high while 0 0.268 would mean a very low level of human development. Since we have three key areas that is health, education and access to resources, hence the Human Development Index is a sum total of the weights assigned to all these dimensions. Now let's see how do we assess the three key areas. To assess health, the data regarding life expectancy at birth is considered as an indicator. A higher life expectancy means that people have greater chance of living longer and healthier lives. To assess education, we look at the number of adults who are able to read and write and the number of children enrolled in schools show how easy or difficult it is to access knowledge in a particular country. And finally, for access to resources, it is measured in terms of purchasing power. So in this, we consider a basket that has the amount of goods or services that can be purchased with one unit of currency. So every country has such a basket valued at their own currency. And that's how we compare one country with another to see which one has better access to resources. Now all the things that we just read is well and fine. I mean it looks really good that we are doing some analytical research going in depth towards measuring human development. However, you need to understand that it is not the most reliable measure. Because all we are doing is just tracking the key areas and relying on a number between 0 to 1 that tells us which country has better human development index. Relying on numbers is just not enough because we also need to consider the distribution of each dimension across the population. What I'm trying to say is that when we compare two countries, what if their scores are really good, say 0 0.983 but how do we know the distribution of health, education and access to resources in both the countries are same? One can have equal distribution and the other may have inequality. But still the final number would look perfect. So this is what is the flaw in this approach. I hope you are getting what I am trying to say. So to deal with this situation, there is another method called the Human Poverty Index. This index measures the shortfall in human development. I hope you are understanding. In one hand, we have the Human Development Index and in the other, we have Human Poverty Index. They are totally opposite and totally worth findings because often the Human Poverty Index is more revealing than the Human Development Index. Looking at both these measures of human development together gives us an accurate picture of the human development situation in a country. The whole point is that measurement of human development are constantly being refined and new ways of capturing different elements of human development are being researched. We will now try to see some international comparisons of human development. Often smaller sized countries have done better than larger ones in human development. So if you see, smaller countries like Norway, Switzerland, Denmark, Austria, all these countries have very high human development index. Similarly, relatively poorer nations have been ranked higher than richer neighbors in terms of human development. For example, Sri Lanka, Trinidad and Tobago have a higher rank than India in the Human Development Index. So what we can understand from this is that size of the territory and per capita income are not directly related to human development. So if you look at the countries with Human Development Index, they are classified in the categories of high, medium and low. Countries with high Human Development Index are those which have a score of above 0 0.8. You can see those countries in this map. In these countries, the government has put education and health care as an important priority. A lot of investment in the social sector has taken place. Countries with medium index value are those which have a score of 0 0.6 to 0 0.8. Again, you can see those countries in this map. Most of these are countries which have emerged in the period after the Second World War. 
Some countries from this group were former colonies. So in these countries, you will find many social discrimination and poor public policies, but they are slowly improving. Most of these countries have a much higher social diversity than the countries with higher human development scores. By social diversity, we mean people from various ethnic background, culture and communities reside together. And finally, countries with low index value are those which have a score below 0.6. A large proportion of these are small countries which have been going through political turmoil and social instability in the form of civil war, famine or a high incidence of diseases. Most of them are African and few of them are Asian countries. So the final takeaway from this chapter is that to know why a country keeps reporting low or high level of human development, it is important to look at the pattern of government expenditure on the social sector. Meaning, we need to see how much and in what sector does a particular government is spending money on. Because that is like directly investing in people of the country. And people are the essential resource for any nation. So the political environment of the country and the amount of freedom people have is very important for a high human development index. On the other hand, places with low level of human development tend to spend more on defense sector rather than social sectors and these countries have political instability. So if a country is caught up in war tension, then it is difficult to initiate any rapid economic development. Just imagine, so much of money goes into the defense and security sector. It's a lot when compared to social sector or civil society. So this chapter has so far been an eye-opener in terms of understanding nation's economic and social changes and how one country does way better than other countries. I hope you have gained some perspective and understood all the concepts. As usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed these videos and see a purpose behind watching them, please like the video and comment down below. Until then, catch you guys later and talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.